Okay, the next uh, order of business on the agenda is public comment. So we'll give, we'd like to uh, give the public a uh, chance to speak in five minutes at this time. And please try to be, uh, you know, we have a lot of people, possibly a lot of comments, so try to be not, not terribly repetitive. Um, and also, too, I think the board um, is sticking to the, the standard policy of, you know, we will certainly listen very attentively to your comments, but we're not going to answer any questions at this time. So, um, anybody would like to uh, speak? This is your opportunity. Can I ask a clarification? clarification? On the agenda, it says that it's for matters not listed on the agenda. So is it public comment about anything, or...? I, I, I just noticed that, um, as far as I know, the law, the law allows you to comment on basically anything related to the board. Okay. So, I, no, I don't think you have to hold yourselves to anything not on the agenda. Can I ask a quick question? So, this agenda doesn't actually say exactly what this is about, a special meeting? I mean, is there, like, other than your... District facility procedures, etc. We have our regular monthly board meetings. Those are regular meetings. Any other meeting is just by definition a special meeting. So, so is this is defined for something? Are we here for something specific that you can elaborate on? Just what's on the agenda. And that's a closed session? Well, there's the, the main agenda items, the use of the district facilities policies and procedures, and then um, the board is asked to go into executive session to discuss uh, performance of specific individuals. That's something that is done in closed session. So we're worried about that when there's others, major more issues for this um, board of trustees to be worried about? Uh, and that is the agenda for this meeting. Um, certainly, we can say we have our regular monthly meetings. And but you haven't called any other special meeting? Mm -hmm. For any other topics that are, uh, I think, a little much more worthy of. I mean, if you want to address that as a comment, but I, that's not something I can really. But you're speak not going to gonna answer questions. What does this board do? <laughs> I, I mean, if you're not here to answer questions for the public, I, I, I mean, we're, we're, we're here to be notified of what's going on. David Brown, Sanctuary. Uh, you three gentlemen are appointed by the Lake County Board, and as such, you're their direct agents. And so all of your actions, we will hold accountable to the Lake County Board members and make them well aware and responsible and accountable for whatever you guys are doing. I just have one quickie, Carl. What, why would you say that there's public comment and then then you say we're not going to answer any of your questions. What? what that doesn't make any sense. The law, the law requires that we have public comment, but um, under the advice of our attorney. We aren't going to answer you, so. so the, that is not, that, that, we have a, we adopted a policy for public comment that says that we will not answer questions unless the board specifically uh, calls for a motion to not to, to suspend that rule and I don't believe that I've heard a motion for that so excuse me does this meeting have anything to do with a three-year-old birthday party is that why we're here I can't answer that question <laughs> well, then... May, I may have come in a little bit late, but who's the fourth gentleman today? Well, this is this is our attorney. Um, he, he and Brian are both uh, members of the same firm, and Brian was not able to be here tonight. So John Kelly is uh, also one of the uh, partners in the firm. Okay. Thank you. Other comments? Yes. In 2002, when the referendum to build this building was being solicited to the community, uh, several flyers were mailed that expressly stated that this would be an open building for the community to use and be on an as-requested basis, as there are no other buildings in the community at that time that were open for public use. 
So I instruct you guys to, to look at what you mailed to the community, what they voted for, what they paid for, what they're still paying for, and that you don't break any promises that were made. As, you'll be as you're going to reflect and be accountable to the Lake County Board, and you're acting in their behalf. And they're accountable for your actions, your decisions, and your communications, and how ridiculous you're looking. Yes. So, my name is Matt Nielsen, and uh, I am the father of the three-year-old that had the birthday party here. Um, it was a great morning for them, and uh, we certainly didn't feel uh, that we acted in any way inappropriately, or that the fire department and the personnel acted in any way inappropriately. The fire department on their website even has a huge section about Nolwood Fire Department in the community, and it talks about how, without the community and without the fire department, how how synergistic they are together, um, and how they have to work together and they build a culture together. Um, so first comment I'll make is the culture that you're presenting right now is not a very open culture for the community. So you're going against what you even market on your website and I find that to be very inappropriate. Um, but it talks strongly about how important the community is and how important the involvement of the fire department and the firefighters are in the community. Um, and it talks about the use of the firehouse for public events. And it talks about the public events that they hold in the firehouse. So it is very odd, the timing of this meeting, and that's the agenda topic is about the use of facilities. And then it has happened now approximately two weeks after this party. And from what conversations we've had with, with people in the community, it all seems to be revolving around the birthday party that we had. Um, Obviously, A, that makes me feel very badly that we did something to generate such a hoopla. Um, it's supposed to be a three-year-old birthday party. It's supposed to be an opportunity for kids to come into the firehouse and meet the firefighters and learn about fire safety and learn about that they can trust the firefighters and that they can trust the firehouse as a safe place for them. And if there's going to be a, a restriction of that, just find that highly inappropriate, other than the fact that obviously people have talked about that this is supposed to be a community center. And this is, from what I understand, this is essentially the only public building that Nolwood has, and it's a community center. And I lived in Nolwood for 10 years. I live in Lake Bluff now, but I lived in Nolwood for 10 years. My wife was a dispatcher at Lake Forest Police Department, so she dispatched for the fire department. She dispatched for fire, for police. So she has a lot of relationships within this fire department as well and it's supposed to be a community center so the fact that there's a special meeting called to address an issue whether there's an issue or not seems to be in question but you guys won't say what the issue is um, and I think that's why people are upset um, it just it just kind of is very concerning um, the website talks about um, having obviously policies and procedures um, so it'll be interesting to know at some point, I understand apparently you're not going to acknowledge tonight, but at some point, and maybe it has to be a FOIA request, to get copies of those policies and procedures as to whether there is an existing policies about the use of the facility. Uh, I was told that there is an existing policy about use of the facility um, <coughs> after the fact by somebody not directly in the fire department, but by a trustee actually. Um, so I'd be curious to see about that and understand whether there truly is, because if there is a policy, I'm not really understanding why there's even a meeting to talk about the use of the facility. Um, that's obviously an issue. Um, the, again, the point of this is a community center and to teach people, and there, there have been multiple groups that have come through this firehouse. Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, other children's events, all kinds of adult events, whatever it may be, but it's about teaching people about fire education and fire safety, and that they can interact with the firemen, and that they can trust the firemen. Just as the police departments do the same, the firemen should be doing the same as well, and they do that. All of our communities in the area do that, and that's an important role for them to do. So any action to try and limit that access is gonna be a real issue for the communities, and it will be detrimental to the relationship of the fire department within the community. For the record, I'm proud to be aware that there's only 10 days remaining in Dan Rouser's appointment. At that time, it's up for renewal. 
board will appoint a new person. This could be his last 10 days. Everybody should know that. Hopefully he's not here in May. Yes. Um, under fire department guidelines, from a national standpoint as well as from a local state level, public education is a directive not only from the National Fire Academy, but also from the National Fire Protection Association. It is truly the purview of fire chief to be that person who reaches out to the public and to be that access point. The precedent you're setting here by potentially, possibly, allegedly making decisions based on public education use of a facility is setting a precedent statewide that may have very negative effects across the board throughout the county, but also statewide everywhere. I also am not exactly sure that this meets the Open Meetings Act or what steps have to be taken in order for this to take place in a reasonable time frame for everybody to be able to have some sort of input. Right now it's taxation without representation. And I think pretty much that's how things went poorly the first time. Thank you. Good luck today. Other comments? I live in Millwood. I've been here for over 25 years. I had absolutely no idea why I came to this meeting tonight. I just heard that there was going to be a special meeting. Um, I looked at an agenda. I don't, still don't know why we're here. I heard a gentleman say something about a birthday party. If that is why we are here, number one, I fully support the birthday party. I fully support the people that had the party here. The fact that it was at a fire station, the fact that they learned about fire safety. And if that is why we're here, and if you folks called the meeting to discuss something about that in a negative way, shame on you. Shame on you. It's ridiculous. Again, I support it. Other comments? Thank you. Well, having been a firefighter for give or take eight or nine years uh, on Lake Bluff and uh, another place, uh, we fell all over ourselves trying to get the public to come in. We had, anytime anybody came, we're just, come on in. That's the way it should be. You know, we were, we were volunteers, we were up there doing, Noelwood is here doing volunteer work, and anything that we can do to, as firefighters, as fire people, as fire women, whatever it happens to be, to help this community is, you can't put a price tag on it. You can't put a price tag on someone's life that you save because you teach a kid how to call 911 or how to stop, drop, and roll. You can't put a price tag on saving that life or on having that child know what to do if something does happen. And this is the place where they will learn. And if you prevent them from learning, you're going to have, sooner or later, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, not next week, maybe not in the next 10 days, but somebody will have missed that opportunity to learn. And that will cost a life. And for you guys to put any sort of a negative connotation on coming to a fire station, to the schools, to the parents, to anyone is, that's awful. I, I can't tell you how awful that is. You know, for a child to learn what to do in, in a situation like that, in any situation, where it's a situation, is, there's no, it's invaluable. You can't put a price tag on it. I may be repeating myself, but you guys need to hear it. Bob, you know it, okay? You can't stop that stuff from happening. The other thing that this, that, that Nolwood does is it teaches the young people a trade, a profession. It gives them an opportunity to learn to be firemen, to learn to be paramedics, EMTs. And that is something that I don't think has been mentioned yet, but it's an open opportunity for people to get a profession that is important and allow them to give back to the community. And instead of out, you know, drinking a 12 pack, they're here busting their butts, helping people. And you guys need to look at what this, the value of this place to the community, not 
what the liability may have been for having seven kids in here that were under three, you know, three or four years old. That's, you know, within there, I don't know how many firemen were here. I bet there were probably a dozen. <laughs> uh, but there wasn't any issue of liability. Yeah, maybe climbing on the trucks wasn't so smart. But as long as there's somebody with them, they learn. And that learning, you can't put a price tag on. So please don't put one on it. Don't make it a negative connotation for anybody. Any comments? I actually just want to add in something. Um, in case there's misunderstanding regarding the party itself, um, and again, a lot of questions regarding whether there's a policy that permission has to be asked of the board in advance. I was told that that is the policy. You're shaking your head no. Okay, so there is no policy. But, um, but there was, it was said by a trustee that there's an existing policy. Um, so clearly miscommunication that needs to be handled. And you know, that's typically these kinds of situations happen because there's miscommunication and things get blown out of proportion. And I totally feel like clearly that's what's happening here. But just to be clear, when we had our event here, there were on staff firefighters that were on staff and on duty. There were the bulk of the group that was here were volunteers, were people that volunteered to come in for the party. So I just don't want people to feel like there was a misuse of funds in some way. The volu firefighters volunteered to come in and work with these children. And that, that, sorry, that's just, I mean, it's an amazing experience for them. Um, and that, you know, to, to think that that might not happen uh, is, is definitely a concern to me. Um, and in addition to that, in terms of the fun kind of thing, we gave what we feel to be and what we were told to be a significant donation to the fire department also, because we knew that there was, regardless of, you know, that they didn't really outlay anything. We knew that it was a use of the room. We knew that, you know, it certainly was a mental use of their time. And we did donate to the fire department on behalf of our family for that, for that as well. So I don't want people to think that there was any kind of misuse of funds as well because that was not the case at all. Other comments? Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Greg Marsh. I have a little small prepared statement here. Um, I'm a lifelong resident of the area. I went to grade school here in Norwood at West Elementary. My dad was a volunteer at Norwood before I was born. I currently am an assistant chief in Lake Bluff. I've been volunteering in Lake Bluff for 30 years. I'm here to express my support for Chief Harlan, which is the crux of the matter here. Being a chief is, to say the least, challenging. A chief has to manage his personnel, has to manage all administrative duties. A chief has to manage the department's relationship with the community. And a chief has to manage his department's relationship with neighboring departments. John has nurtured an atmosphere of cooperation and mutual understanding the needs of his and his neighbor's departments and how we can share responsibilities and achieve the ultimate goal of what my chief calls assured response. John also takes very seriously the chief's responsibility of continued community awareness programs to promote fire safety in the community. One of the commonly used tactics of this community awareness program is educating children about fire safety. This is often accomplished while hosting a group of children during a special event such as a school outing to a firehouse or a scouts outing to a firehouse and yes sometimes a birthday party. Typically at one of these events a couple of firemen would put on all their gear in front of the children and speak to them about fire safety while wearing their air mask. This is done to alleviate some some of the fear when a child is in need of rescue they will know what a rescuer looks like and sounds like. Then there's always the stop drop and roll training. It's invaluable. Fire departments have always been considered part of the community center. As an example, I have compiled a list of the various activities that the Lake Bluff Fire Department has participated in that don't actually involve firefighting or EMS services. This is standard practice. In the 12 months in 2016, the Lake Bluff Fire Department was involved in 21 various activities, eight birthday parties, seven hosted events in and around the firehouse, three school visits, and three block parties. 
Let me wrap this up by stating that it would be awfully short-sighted to relieve or reprimand an outstanding member of this community and an accomplished member of the fire service for doing what is expected and appreciated by both. Yesterday, my husband had a conversation with Dan, and it was stated that the birthday party is not the issue. The issue is that there is an existing policy in place that states that the board must authorize all public events, and this did not take place. So what is at hand, according to Dan, is the fact that the policy was not followed. Now, according to this agenda, that is not clear, and it's about discussing the use of the facility. Well, if there's a policy that exists, then there's no discussion about use necessary, and this is mute. If Dan was not truthful yesterday, then there is an issue that the board is not being truthful and the board cannot be trusted. So everything is not lining up, and you just need to be aware of the kind of circumstance and well, I'll just leave it with that. Is it policy? Is it the chief is supposed to ask permission mm -hmm. to to hold something in this uh, in this building? Is that the policy? It's Thomas' record, isn't it? Somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. So you can't answer that. Well, again, it's just I'm operating under the policy that the, that the board is not going to answer questions. So then, can we see it? <coughs> Where's the policy? It's open to the public, right? Can we see Sub it? Subject to an appropriate Freedom of Information Act request, the department can make the uh, policy available. Why do you guys hide behind procedure? Because procedure is there to protect everybody, both you and the, the district board. And, and if the board um, is to engage in giving out policies, then they are going to establish a precedent of doing it all the time. The, the, the Freedom of Information Act is there for just this purpose. District is happy to comply with the Freedom of Information Act. Another question. What would be an instance where the policy would work against you? Why would it not be public record? I'm not saying it's the policy necessarily, but there could be requests for other kinds of information. For example, your personnel file that right. the district doesn't want to give out. So the Freedom of Information Act protects both you, members of the department, and the department, and the public in terms of the access to the record. I understand confidential information, but we're talking about public policies. Just, I'm just asking a question. Yes, ma'am. How are we as a public able to follow these policies if they're not available to us? Say, if I wanted to have a meeting here, how am I going to know that I have to get permission from the board? I mean, this is a catch-22 that's impossible for anybody to follow. This is the most, I mean, this is ridiculous. Clearly, everyone here, the family that had the party, would have been delighted to follow policy. Unfortunately, there's no way to know it's there. It's very disappointing. Very disappointing. In fact, it's, it's pretty ridiculous. Ten days, Dan. Ten days. <laughs> Hi, Karen. Um, are the trustees not supposed to be working with the taxpayers, the citizens, and the fire department? Are you not appointed through our politicians that we elect? And if so, I, I would imagine that we should all be working together. Is that not correct? Or do you just do your own thing and the politicians take the heat for that? Or do we just sit back and say, well, okay, they may do their decision and that's that? I mean, somebody obviously appointed everybody here, you all, and it wasn't us. So I'm assuming it was the politicians that represent us as the taxpaying citizens. 
I'm not going to answer. Hearing none, then we will move on to item three, use of district facilities, including policies, uses, procedures, authorizations, notices, etc. Um, I spoke with Brian earlier uh, in the week and asked him if he knew if there was a uh, an existing manual, and he was not sure if, uh, because he's only been here a few years, if there was. Um, so he said at the next meeting he would put together a real you know, simple boilerplate for the board to begin to work with uh, Chief Harlow on having just a general set of uh, policies and procedures of making the building available with proper uh, insurance and, and staffing and how we would go about doing that so different functions can be held and, and proceed here. So um, that's all I have to say on it. I, I looked, I asked him if he could get it to us before the meetings, so each one of the three of us could look at it, mark it up, and make our own comments. John as well, to, to get it to John and Mike, both just to uh, look through it and review it. Okay. Uh, that's it. No, I'm okay. waiting for that, too. Okay. Um, I think just, just for you know, the good of everybody, um, as far as I, as I know, um, as, as Brian said, since I've been here, I've not been aware of an existing um, all-encompassing set of policies uh, regarding this. I've never seen it, never laid my eyes on it. Um, but that doesn't surprise me. I think that's pretty typical. And I know that in my, um, like I said, my, my, my uh, former life, uh, I was very much involved in, you know, in, in, in information security and privacy with policies. And, and I, a fairly significant corporation, and we had some of the same issues. But what was typically the case was there was a lot of practices and procedures that had been followed um, by people. So it wasn't just making it up as we went along. And I think that's very much the case here, is that we have a lot of existing practices and procedures. I think we are well served to um, go through the, through the important ones particularly and turn them into formal policies for the future. Uh, I did a little looking um, since I came on the board, and we've done about five or six. I think we've done an investment policy, we've done a um, uh, purchasing policy, because spending money is one of those things you do really need to be, be uh, um, more precise about, uh, like a policy on emergency lights on cars, on the use of e-dispatch, um, uh, drug and substance abuse. But but we sort of come along on that, so that that's where we're going. Um, the, in looking at, you know, uh, talking to the chief about the existing uh, policies, well, I should say the existing practices, I think what, you know, based on history, and I think, again, uh, Deputy Chief Issel has a good, you know, good input on that, having been around a long time. As you may notice on our website, um, we do have, you know, say that the community areas, this room and the, and the, and the room upstairs, are available for the community to use um, pretty much is whenever they're available and as long as those uses don't interfere with the public safety functions of this of, um, the district. And they're not one of the prohibited things like you know, a, a political party or a for-profit uh, endeavor, something along those lines. And we've been operating under those um, sort of general practices for a long time. So uh, I think you know to address you know, the, the particular issue of the birthday party, I think it falls under both. But having a birthday party in this room is a community event. I mean, I don't see any issue with why somebody wants to do that. And again, the expense is borne by the, by the, the people, not by the district. Um, but also, too, we do a lot of community outreach, public safety, fire safety training, uh, all those things. I think that's part of our mission. Uh, and so, it's not at all uncommon to combine the two things. That, that was certainly the, 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 the drift that I was getting from talking to, to the chief. Um, and, and I also, in talking to, to Brian, our attorney, and also I, I reached out to our insurance um, uh, agent. Uh, again, his company is the company that handles volunteer fire departments all over the country. And he said in his experience that we had all the proper coverages in place to allow for this. 
that, um, it, again, very, very, very common practice um, to do events like this. So I think everything's consistent. So um, certainly I think that the impression that I'm getting at this point is that the direction of the board is just to simply codify the practice going forward. I'm not really hearing anything that anybody's complaining about the practice in the past. So. That's pretty much Okay, I have one other just quick item on that that I want to direct it to to Matt. I apologize if I indicated to you that there that I knew of a policy. I didn't mean to say that. I did not know of the policy. So, <laughs> that was a conversation private between you and, and me, Matt. And if I, if I misspoke, I apologize to you because I'm not aware of it. That's part of what this is, is to put it in place so that everything can be done. Why are we here? Good question. Um, I think we're all wondering that. Uh, during our conversation, that's what I was trying to get across here, that uh, it's just a matter of getting everything uh, lined up properly, and I wasn't aware of anything that was was currently in place. So that's all we're trying to do, is, is put it in place. Uh, I believe we tried to do it without getting this into the regular board meeting and taking up the time. Um, so, what? <laughs> um, so anyhow, Matt, that's what I wanted to say to you and your wife both. So I, I apologize if when you and I spoke that I wasn't clear on that. That's all I have. Um, also, one thing, and I apologize, I should have brought this up at the beginning. I'd be very remiss not to do so. But um, uh, I spoke to both of um, the county board reps that, that um, our district is in, and they both wanted to express their regrets for not being able to be here tonight. They both wish they could, but they both had personal reasons why they couldn't. They asked me to convey that. So, can you name who the reps are, please? Uh, yes, Mike Rummel is the, the, the head of the uh, the Mowood part, and Sandy Hart is the uh, the Lake Bluffs sanctuary portion of the district. So again, my apologies for not bringing that up the, at the beginning, but. It, so, okay. Um, so, may I just ask something? I, I'm curious because if, if in fact you're here to uh, figure out these policies and procedures and make sure that everything, as you said, was in order, and then in number four, we're in a closed session to discuss the performance of specific individuals of the district. I mean, if everything seems to have been legit and everything, other than asking permission from this board, is from what I'm understanding, to have this birthday party or another function at some point, I, I'm assuming, what, why is it a closed session to speak about a, a performance of a specific individual? Uh, is that not open to the, I mean, should we not know about this either? I mean, what, why? Well, under, under the Open Meetings Act, there are certain things that you can address it. That the uh, board is able to go into executive session to discuss. They cannot take any action if they wish to take an action. And typically... So when you do number four, you're coming back to talk to us about number five, or whatever action? Yes, if, if, if there is. If it's just a discussion, not really. So but you can clarify it more. Yes, but I mean, typically what you're... Typically, that has to do with things like, like if there's pending contract negotiations or personnel well, this is issues. Well, a performance of specific individuals of the district. The, the Open so Meetings Act makes a specific exception session. to have a closed session to discuss personnel. And the reason for that is just to protect the personnel involved. If the district, for instance, gets a complaint against one of the firefighters, that is not something that I'm sure that the district, the chief, Firefighter himself or herself would want discussed in front of the open public. So the, the uh, opportunity for the board to discuss it in closed session. Now, if that those charges uh, become uh, factual or, or require discipline, the actual activity is going to have to take place in an open session. But the discussion, and then we will we will be notified or we will if, know if about if there's something that happened, it would the board would have to vote on it in an open session. The board can take no votes in a closed session. Hmm. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the closed session. Um, I don't think it's actually adjourned. Isn't it to recess? To recess the meeting mm -hmm. and uh, go to closed session. Second.
Green Hall in favor? Aye. So it has to be a roll call vote. Uh, Trustee Brown? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Southern? Aye. 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 So the board is going to close out under section 2C1 of the Open Meetings Act. Uh, the board will return to open session after the closed session. Right. Okay, under item 5, uh, action arising from closed session. If any, there is no action arising from closed session. So I make a motion to adjourn. Okay, um, second. Is at uh, 628. Motion to adjourn. Meeting. At 628, uh, Bob seconded. Okay, uh, voice vote. Um, all Aye. 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 Thank you all for coming. Oh, they're already done. <laughs> 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 <laughs>